Welcome back to our crash damaged BMW M4. Now, believe it or not, in this video, it might be looking a bit ropey now, but we're aiming to get it up and running. It might not be 100%, but in this video, cross your fingers with us, we're gonna hear that engine run properly. Now, you may have noticed in the first video, wheels were quite bad. I think they'd been curbed before the car was crashed, and it might have taken a knock in the crash, but just as well, we know exactly the guy to sort them. Hi there, I'm Mark, I'm the general manager at the Wheel Specialist Cumbernauld. Today I'm going to show you around our workshop and what we do on a daily basis. So this is our office, this is where we check the customers in, uh, we do a vehicle inspection with yourself on arrival, and here is the 16 standard finishes that you get for the price you've been quoted, depending on the size of the wheel. So after the vehicles have been inspected by myself or Lindsay, we drive it round into our secure yard, where it's then placed into a parking space, and we'll put the vehicle up in axle stands and the tyre fitters will then take the wheels off. After the tyre fitters have taken the tyres off the wheels and the balancing weights, we then bring the loose wheels over to the stripping tank. This is a biochemical that strips wheels in about three to four hours. After we've taken the wheels out of the tank, what we have to do is because they're covered in chemical, we have to give them a quick pressure wash and then after that, they get lifted round to the prep area. We then take them through to this prep desk where they get grinded, sanded and polished. And then after they've been done and all the damage has been taken out and they're smooth, they then get put into the automated shop blaster and both sides of the wheels get shop blasted. That, what that does is that blasts off any underlying water damage or corrosion that's currently sitting on top of the wheel. What was really cool here is Mark had already carried out all these processes on our M4 wheels so they were ready to get blown off with the air compressor and get that first layer of powder down onto them. So cool to be able to see this process on your own wheels. That's the base coat now done, base coat silver. After that it then gets cured for 10 to 12 minutes and then it gets brought back out again. We then wet paint it and then gloss lacquer or satin lacquer depending on your choice. So after the wheels have been heated up in the oven and powder coated the colour of your choice, we then... I'll maybe start that again, eh? <laughs> <laughs> if they're getting diamond cut, they don't get lacquered, they get brought down to our lathe. They then get hung up and weighted until they have to hang up in the CNC lathe, which is here. Here they are coming back out of the oven. The heat in here was absolutely unbelievable. Unless you've felt one of these ovens, you won't know what I'm talking about. And here is the finished article. They look absolutely amazing. Now, we just need to get the tires mounted, get them back over to the garage, and get them back on to our M4. Speaking of which, is still sat on a ramp looking pretty broken. Oh, it makes you realise what a long way we've still got to go. So it really is like Christmas day here. We've got all sorts of BMW parts. We've got the headlights, we've got the crash bars and stuff. Can't wait to get that on the car. However, first things first, we need to get the coolant into the car. Now, these Beamers use a little bit of a complicated coolant system because they've got the charge cooler and they've actually got a separate radiator for the engine cooling as well. And they need to be put in with a compressor, which is what we've got here. So effectively, we use compressed air, it put negative pressure in, we've got this pipe going into our bucket of coolant, and when we turn it on, the theory is, we'll be able to pressurize the coolant into the system. That's all in theory, at least anyway. Right Grant, run us through the technicalities of what's happening here then. So, for an HP compressor. Is that an eBay special? It's an eBay special. Oh, it's yeah. like an eBay special. German special. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what that is, is um, it's fancy, this is an eBay special, it's a Chinese special. Um, so basically, it, we pressurise uh, the input, uh, it's a non-return valve, which shoots at this pipe, and it's the Venturi effect which draws air out of the charge cooling tank. So the charge cooler is just now sitting in negative pressure. Um, obviously the bucket's at positive pressure, but it's just filled in with this. So we basically open this valve. This whole side is negative. We open this valve and it draws the coolant into the expansion tank. So if you open that valve a little bit, but now we're going to see that shoot should, through. It should shoot up and you go. Oh, yep. All right, okay. And that gets rid of the airlocks. 
Good wee system. Simple, eh? Ah, uh, nice and German. <laughs> Just in case it goes wrong. Oh. So as if it's not enough of a process, having to use the pressurising system to get the coolant into the car, we then need to do a self, what's it called again? A self bleed on the car, which obviously requires a battery to be in there. So we've stolen the battery from the little Clio and it seems to be enough to get this car going. So there's a bit of a process you need to follow in order to get the car to initiate a self bleed. The big problem is it can take up to five minutes for the car to start doing it, so you're stood around trying to determine whether or not it's worked. So it took us a couple of attempts to get it to actually initiate, but when it did, it's pretty audible. You can hear that the car is doing something. So all we had to do then is top up the coolant a little more and let the car do its thing. So with the coolant all taken care of, the only thing that stood between us and seeing this thing run for the first time was the oil cooler right on the bottom of the engine, so really easy to fit quickly. So we took care of that, got some oil in, and got ready to start this thing. As we're pouring the oil in, we just remember the sump plug isn't tight. <laughs> Finger tight. So unfortunately, it seems our celebrations were to have been a bit premature. See if you can tell why. Are we moving? We're a bit seized, but we are moving. That noise, you think that is just brakes? So you can see our concern when we came under here with that noise happening, it's right in the vicinity of the rear differential. Thank God, however, we've noticed this heat shield has become a little bit dislodged and is hitting off the prop shaft. If we pull it down, then the noise stops. You can see what's happened here. See the dirt on the underside? That's probably been those Copart forks coming under to lift the car. It snapped this off and that's what's causing the noise. Thank God we don't need to replace that. So here is our old broken headlight. So speaking to BMW, <laughs> just countless bits falling off it. Speaking to BMW, this is about 16, 1700 pounds to buy new, but thankfully we managed to find a second hand one here, which looks pretty good. It's got the odd chip on it and such, but so does the car. And this was only 350 pounds. Now we do unfortunately need to swap a few bits over, but it's well worth it to save. 12, 1300 pounds, I think. So with the bits from the old headlight now transferred over to the new headlight, we could get them installed on the car. We then followed that up by installing our new bonnet or hood if you're watching from the USA. And unfortunately, we are still waiting on one of the lower crash arms coming, so we couldn't properly install the front bumper. But that didn't stop us doing a test fitment. We wanted to make sure everything was fitting okay, everything was straight, and also how awesome and together does our M4 look with its albeit blue bumper. We 
We really are so humbled to be the ones to be able to bring this M4 back to its former glory. We're even more humbled to have such a great growing audience of supportive subscribers here on YouTube. Your support literally means everything to us and if you haven't already please do hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. We'll see you next week when we're hopefully ready to take this thing for a drive.